Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thursday Live Lesson. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. I'm going to be your instructor for today. Joining us are Mr. Aaron, the voice, Nakamura. Say what's up, Aaron. What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend, Fergan. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? Here it is. It's Thursday Live Lesson. We uh, basically do it like this. You guys have questions. We answer them no matter how, you know, we get them via email, via uh, whatever texts. <laughs> if you have Kahai's number. Kahai, did you give your phone number out so that people can text you? Yeah. What's a stick stickly's number? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it? Wait, wait. Write to me, stick stickly, uh, P.O. Box 963, <laughs> New York City, New York State, 10108. <laughs> Dang, heck yeah. You're talking to a Nicktoon kid, man. Yeah. <laughs> We're just on a, a serious ukulele podcast, so I, we have to get that out. I right? know. Like, yeah. I was oh, holding it in all the time. <laughs> oh. So thank you for those of you folks who tuned in to Ukulele Friends Hawaii. Um, for it's it was an it was an awesome time. It was two hours of just like talking story to some of the greatest ukulele players and just some of the greatest humans on earth. It was it was really cool. Um, and I think we mentioned it last week. I don't know if uh, if we mentioned it after we we uh, we stopped um, we stopped the podcast, but. It's like every single one of those, you know, guys are like Hoku Award winners. <laughs> They're like <laughs> award winning, not just ukulele players, but just musicians in general in, in, in Hawaii. And they're they highly regarded. So it's, it's an honor to be, you know, a part of that uh, part of that podcast. So if you guys haven't checked it out, go to the Ukulele Friends Hawaii uh, Facebook. And I believe they have the um, they have it on archive. I'm sure I'm sure they have it on archive. Uh, yeah, so some of the people that were there, there's um, there's Asa Young, there was Brian Tolentino, there was Herb Walter Jr., there was Craig, there's Kama, there was uh, well, Jake showed up, you know, like Brittany. later on, Brittany was there. Uh, just one other person, forget. Oh man, it, it was just just check it out. It was it was awesome. I mean, you know, I don't want to single anybody out, but it was it was a great time. We we had a great time. Uh, Aaron and Kahai were there also. They chimed in, you know, every, every now and then. It was it was good fun. So if you guys want to check out a, a different podcast than this with some serious ukulele discussion, <laughs> then uh, yeah, <laughs> go check that out. Okay. Um, but this show, however you guys want to give it to us, we'll try to answer it as best as we can. So I try to answer as best as I can. These two guys will come in with their two cents, and we come up with the best answer possible. If not, then we're just going to talk about Nicktoons, which I, apparently we already started doing. <laughs> so hit me, Kahai, with the first question, buddy. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Glenn mm -hmm. uh, kind of had an interesting question. Sure. Uh, or it is an interesting question. Mm -hmm. um, he said, do you have any tips for transposing... Uh, music from games mm. uh, and then he gave an example of a game that he wants to try it on so. yeah yeah, um, you know, I, I do this all the time. I transcribe a lot of um, video game music into ukulele music. Um, Kahai kind of showed me the one that you were you were working on, the way you're thinking about, um, you know, arranging or the song that you're thinking about arranging. And I think it's great. Um, you know, as far as advice goes, <clears throat> like my best advice is to kind of get to know the song. Okay, and and know. Um, what makes that song what you know uh where it starts and where it ends because video game music because you're kind of playing the you know the level and some people take forever to do the level so that song is going to repeat it's going to have you know um it's going to have a, a place where it loops and end endlessly so knowing where the beginning and the end of that loop is is going to be very important and kind of knowing uh how the song goes because um that's the part that you want to kind of figure out and then once you got that uh, you can kind of separate it in different, you know, in, in different parts. Say, for example, the Super Mario, you know, song that we did here on Ukulele Underground. We broke it up to, you know, a bunch of different parts because that's how I kind of saw it as. Um, learn one part at a time and uh, and it really take your time with it. It's not, you know, it's not a race or, you know, it's not like a, there's no time constraints of you like having to figure out. Um, you know the song in the fastest time. So take your time and do it in uh, you know in, in chunks and in bunches. Another you know another thing to kind of think about, especially with the song that you let us listen to, is if there's a part that you can latch onto that sounds kind of remotely close to ukulele. And from what I heard, there was kind of like I think it was a guitar in the in the um, you know in the melody line. Uh, maybe the second movement of uh, of that song had kind of a guitar and on the bottom, and that's something that you can follow, um, because it has you know similar traits to what the ukulele can do. So you can kind of get an idea of what the arrangement will look like and it's kind of, or will will sound like just by listening to that part. Um, you can also gather the groove and you know and um, 
in the rhythm of the song based on that but with you know with the groove and stuff you can always like listen to the uh the the drums the bass and things like that but for the most part follow what sounds familiar and see if you can emulate what that guitar is doing with your ukulele uh there's some great melody going on in there that's really what you know video games are all about it's all about melody playing on and pumping you up as you go through the levels you know so it was tougher back then with like the 8-bit kind of sounding stuff um figuring that out was a little bit difficult and different but now you know with a uh, with, with sound being so amazing on all these consoles um, it's a lot easier to make ukulele arrangements and you know other than that the normal like advice of like figure out the key you just kind of like hunt around hunt you know with uh, what notes the melody line is or are and then um uh, finding out the chords to it if you watch any of our ukulele challenge videos you know i've done um i've done stuff like that where i've made arrangements in an hour that's you know that's a great way to kind of look at it i'm just kind of feeling around for what the notes are come up with you know come up with the notes that that's good and come up with the key and then try to figure out the uh the background chords that goes along with it and from there i can kind of have an idea of what notes you know they're playing so if you want an example of how i arrange um you know ukulele or ukulele video game music check out the ukulele challenge but other than that just have fun man it's video games are fun and i think video game music is some of the best music in the world <laughs> mega man 2 best soundtrack ever <laughs> <laughs> I told uh, I was like talking to Glenn, mm -hmm. kind of. I, I tried to help him out, like, mm -hmm. in, you know, in the time before live lesson. Mm -hmm. um, and I told him that video game music can be pretty busy, you know. Yeah. yeah like yeah. especially older video game music, because if you think about it, they're like limited by the instrumentation they could do. So they mm -hmm. try to like use creative ways to make the music sound more full than you know the limitation of the console itself. Uh, so like if you uh, actually like the ukulele challenge that you did with like uh, is it called Megalovania? Megalovania mm -hmm. or <clears throat> Undertale? Undertale. Mm -hmm. Like that song is it's for eight bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, it's super busy, right? Yeah. Like uh, if you listen to it, like there's kind of a, a hook that plays throughout the whole thing, and then there's like a separate picking or melody mm -hmm. line that plays over it too. So I think like when you were during the uh, the challenge while you're figuring it out instead of like repeating the hook over and over and over you kind of uh said it once so people could recognize it mm -hmm. and then you went to the other part where that's uh the other picking part that's like kind of comes up later in the song too so kind of uh, i think if you're listening to game music like that you gotta have to be selective about what you do because you can't do like every everything part. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and um you know it you can also approach it with like a chord melody kind of you know uh, mentality so if you check out the videos for for doing chord melody a lot of that is uh you might want to incorporate so like i said it's, it's very busy so it's good to you know stick to one of the main melody lines and then see if you can back that up with some chords because you can't there's a lot of like melodies and counter melodies and like a bass melody going on but just kind of pick which one you want to bring out and, uh, and and put some chords behind it so it sounds more full yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, that song too actually mm -hmm. um video game music is i mean if you take the time and listen to it it's super interesting because mm -hmm. if you think mm -hmm. about what they have to do it's a tough challenge you know mm -hmm. like the the game developer might say oh make a three minute song but can you make mm -hmm. it so that when people are playing a level for half an hour an hour they won't get bored of it <laughs> or may, can yeah. you make something where it like it sounds different enough that mm. people think it's a different song but mm. actually uh, you know it has the underlying theme from this mm. original piece or whatever yes. so even this this song that uh glenn asked like i was playing it and, and some parts of it i'm like what's going on because like i thought i was playing in the right key but i'm not anymore mm -hmm. uh, it changes it up yeah and i think what they do is they play between b flat and e flat mm -hmm. and so those keys are kind of similar yeah so you can oh. play chords and then all of a sudden it just like kind of shifts very mm -hmm. subtly where you don't really hear it and they're yeah. playing in a different key so yeah. that's that's like tricks that uh game video game composers mm -hmm. use to make sure that the music stays interesting and it's not just like mm -hmm. 
Oh, I heard this song already yeah. for the fifth. But time. it's not jarring. Like the transition isn't jarring yeah, no. where it's like it signals a different level or it's yeah, still yeah. the same level. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's not where it's like, oh my gosh, they just, it's like just on repeat and mm. they can't stand this. Song <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that's kind <clears> of the <throat> interesting things that if you dive a little bit deeper, you'll probably start to notice with video game music. Mm. Who's, I mean, I know you watch a lot of YouTube videos and then follow a lot of people, Kai, um, and you watch and you play video games. Um, who are some of the like video game uh, musicians? Because that, <laughs> that you, you, that that's a yeah. thing now. <laughs> that's a thing. That's, a, that's very much a thing. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think? Uh, he's not, a, well, he is a musician, but mm. then I, I don't think he's known for, like, he doesn't make videos about playing, mm. but he makes videos about analyzing the music in games mm. that's a 8-bit music theory oh cool mm. yeah, yeah. yeah i've seen that mm. yeah and he's very thoughtful about mm. like you know explaining everything too and he mm. kind of you know not just explain like oh here's a theory mm. of uh the, the theory of the so song you know or mm. whatever a lot of times he kind of he goes into like why the composer probably wrote it this mm. way you know oh. like what's the feeling they're trying to get across mm. and yeah how does that translate into the music so yeah I really like his stuff. He he's seems like a really smart dude. And and, and I mention it because uh, that's whenever I do an arrangement for for a game, I always try to check YouTube to see who else have made an arrangement, and that kind of gives me an idea of uh, of how I'm gonna approach the you know approach the song or what's possible even you know uh -huh. like what someone already did. Um, that's also a great way of, of doing it, just kind of getting an idea or, um, you know, find a, a video game song that sounds similar to what, what you're doing so you can, you can get a, an idea of what it can, what can sound like. Uh, as far as that goes, I like um, Mini Bosses, like one of my, one of my favorite bands oh. that do, <laughs> Band. uh, you know, like um, video game music. Uh, <clears throat> there's, I don't know what their like YouTube name is, but there's like this Korean couple that like, that did a cover of like the Animal Crossing theme, oh. and it's full. I think Aaron, you would dig it. Because, I was gonna like, ask if you've done you, any Animal Crossing because oh, yeah. because that like, video exists. I have not done any Animal Crossing really? stuff. He said so. I gotta show you because um, they're not only great musicians, but they're great at like um at video editing. Like uh -huh. the, they made it look like they're part of the Animal Crossing world, oh, and see. they're like, kind of jamming in their stuff, and it. The uh, it changes from like them kind of playing ukulele in, in, like, in the park together, and then it, it transitions to like their house and the girls playing piano instead. It uh. goes to this like all these different changes in, in the music, and it's uh -huh. kind of amazing. I gotta send you the link, uh, we'll, we'll have the link below. And it's really, really, really cool. I, I posted it on my Twitter not too long ago. Yes, I have a Twitter just in case people were like, we're wondering. people still use Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I, I get me <laughs> to share the one YouTube videos <laughs> for people. Someone else that we got we should mm -hmm. shout out to is uh, Abe. Abe does video game yes. covers, and yeah. he did a video game cover of Animal Crossing. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of like, <laughs> so this good. Is this is criminal how little views this has. <laughs> oh, this is such a good cover. Please go watch yeah, yeah. Abe's cover. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, that that couple, I felt like, should win the internet for that. Like, that <laughs> kind of awesome covers. So I'll, I'll have Kai post it for you yeah. folks. But what, um, What's the last video game song that you figured out or tried I to arrange? Um, I did Toad Harbor. From Super Mario Kart, and I posted it on my Instagram. So yeah. Check that out. On I'm also on Instagram, man, and I'm trying to just yeah. peddle my wares here, so yeah. <laughs> promote myself. Yeah. Can I do that real quick? Kai? I do I the just... socials. <laughs> you want to see my um, my <laughs> portrait uh, photo shoot for myself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just got home or just just woke up out uh, of bed and just woke up like this. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me on TikTok and uh, sign up for my Patreon. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I just I do Instagram and Twitter like for for fun. <laughs> it's uh -huh. not like not promoting anything. It's like oh man, you should check out this Animal Crossing video. I mean that's what I'll put. Or uh, yeah, I. But it was on guitar though, ukulele, um, whatever the maybe Megalovania. Like I haven't done an ukulele uh -huh. um, video game. No, actually. That is a lie, because um, I have been figuring some stuff out for a secret project that you know that, that we're doing here for Ukulele on the ground. So I pick up, uh, I figured out a bunch, to be honest. Um, and I think the last one that I did was Guile's theme from Street Fighter Two, because that 
Gauss theme works with everything. <laughs> it does. There's a video. There's proof that it works. Have you seen that video, Kahai? Gauss, Gauss theme works for everything. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I or think they, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like they dub like a bunch of movies yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and situations with Gauss theme. <laughs> so I figured I had to learn that for for this future project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they have some of that. Like, um, I think is it the lavender town theme from Pokemon? Mm-hmm. They use that to remix <laughs> with <laughs> yeah. I love that like, song. Or like uh, it it. There's a ton of video game music mm-hmm. that they remix with, like, rap, you know? Oh. And rap not made for video game music or anything. But yeah. that's kind of the beauty of video game music <laughs> is that they it obviously has a theme and it has, like, something that to remind you, like, oh, this is for this part of the game. But then it's also vague enough where it can mm-hmm. be used for a lot of different yeah. situations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the non-safe for work uh co- like rap collab is the um there's a kirby theme with like uh drop it like it's hot by, oh. uh, by snoop dog uh-huh. that's like one of my favorite i think I've video heard... game rap collabs. <laughs> yeah i think i've heard uh like kirby remix with like dmx and stuff mm. too so yeah there's mm-hmm. a, a ton oh, the, and there's an album called ocarina of rhyme uh-huh. where, where like they did um like yeah, you know, like the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time songs, and they like mixed it with a bunch of like rap stuff, uh, cool. which is really cool. And that check that out. <laughs> that <laughs> and the uh, I mean, it's not video game related, but the Gray album where they like they took the Beatles White album and uh, Jay Z's Black album and they like put it together. <laughs> oh, so good, so good. Dropping some knowledge right now. <laughs> some good, like video game inspired music. But yeah, it's it's cool. It's cool. So Ocarina of Rhyme. It's a while back. I mean, two thousand eight or something. It's a oh. long time ago. But still, one of my favorite um, video game rap collaborations. <laughs> Kai, do we have another question? Um, there is. I, I'm trying to figure out what mm-hmm. this person means oh. uh, by this question. Mm-hmm. So maybe we can go on to. Um, uh, the student review. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us about the student reviews, Kai. Yeah, uh, it, uh, we got a student review from Rob. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Playing on his baritone. Uh, what song is he playing? He's playing. Uh, flamingo. Yeah, yeah. Flamingo. So he was uh, playing flamingo. Um, for those of you folks who don't know, you can send us videos and we can uh, kind of give you an assessment on, on Thursday if you're comfortable with that. You know, um, it, So Rob has sent us a video of himself playing the baritone ukulele and he's playing flamingo. Great job. First off, great job, Rob. I mean, you're like getting so much better from when we like saw you in February. So, I, I mean everything was good the singing was is always great you know your your knowledge of chords you're really kind of playing some beautiful chords in there the only thing that i would say to kind of work on is watch out for your bar chords you know there were some bar chords there and and just make sure that your finger is straight really it's just that your finger um tends to kind of come at an angle and if you angle your finger here you're going to get that that sound on, on the side so make sure that the angle on your bar is nice and straight so that you get that angle nice and or that bar nice and clean because as you go down here and you know i understand because you're playing some stuff with your other fingers here and i guess you know taking it from this angle is is a little bit easier to get those chords down but what you're doing by taking this angle is if you have the a string relying on your pointer finger that's going to create that you know that sound so just make sure you watch out for that everything else is okay rhythm was good um the chords were beautiful singing was nice so good job <laughs> yeah, Rob, Rob is another one of those mm-hmm. where, like, it, it really is like, uh, I don't know what else we can tell you because mm-hmm. I think you for yeah. you probably know what we're gonna tell you. Like, yeah. you know what you gotta fix yourself. And... Yeah, it was good though. I mean, you know, like he uh, he's playing some beautiful chords, and that's like one of the things that that I really take away from that you know that performance is that his you know his ability to want to be able to incorporate some beautiful sounding chords and that's how he's always been when he was here for the retreat he uh he went to go ask Calais to see what kind of stuff he can add to mm-hmm. like um the stuff that he was playing already i think he was doing um uh, hanalei moon or some kind of you know like uh, some kind of hawaiian song and ask Calais if he could you know if he had any ideas on some like some chord voicings that he can do instead and you've you've gotten a lot a lot better since then so good mm-hmm. job man yeah, I like mm-hmm. I like the fact that he keeps the rhythm pretty steady mm-hmm. too. Like you know, mm-hmm. even if he 
he sort of kind of messes up on a chord or yeah, it doesn't come out going, super kept, clean kept he'll he'll mm -hmm. keep going and that's kind of important mm -hmm. for um i think yeah if anything like the one thing i wish i could hear from rob but like it, like i i don't feel like i need to say it you know it if anything i'm saying this because like it's just some maybe other people can take it from the live lesson but uh i wish it sounded like he was a little bit more relaxed while playing his mm. music itself mm. but then that just comes with like playing the song more you know like the the better you know the song i think the more relaxed you are while playing it mm -hmm. so any anybody i think if yeah if you, you're playing a song and it feels like kind of you know shaky or you're unsure that's probably just coming from like the more you just got to play it more mm -hmm. just play it more and kind of play it and relax and yeah go through it so many times you know yeah mm -hmm. where it becomes it, it becomes autopilot right it's yeah like, yeah i can yeah. play that song yeah the more you do it too the more you do it on, on video the more you do it in front of an audience the more comfortable you'll feel with it and i think the the groove will feel a lot more smooth yeah yeah although his singing was like he obviously yeah. knows the song yeah, yeah. pretty well so so yeah just yeah yeah like you clean up kind of things and yeah. good <laughs> mm. yeah. that's why it's like uh yeah uh, just play some more i guess <laughs> yeah. yeah okay okay do we have another student review or do you want to ask a question uh yeah so there oh, I, I, I got the question from the chat mm -hmm. uh and so tom was asking about uh, he said that he's about a beginner one year in mm -hmm. and he's trying to build a song repertoire mm. uh, i of course want something for everyone any suggestions on how to build it ah and I he mean, said like uh asking more about it uh mm. he said um i wanting to get over my shyness of playing for others mm. oh, okay um the best way it really is you know to to utilize the play alongs that we have here in ukulele underground you know we have tons and tons of songs about over 200 or almost 200 at this point how much songs do we have in the song lessons yeah. you guys know uh, uh yeah over 200 over Easy. 200 yeah over 200 songs and um you know, what, what I tell people is to pick two or three of those songs every week to kind of work on and learn as much as you can because, um, you know, uh, and I tell them is it's a small, like, take the small steps, take the small victories because you don't have to finish the song. Um, what, what you do is you learn as much as you can and at the end of the, you know, at the end of the week, whatever, you know, whatever you did gain, it, it's just considered as a win. So, for example, if you learn one new chord that week, you're one new chord better than you were last week. If you learn one new pattern or rhythm or whatever it or picking you know picking pattern then you're that much better than you were last week you finish a song that's even better but just try to do you know like take the small steps and then the next week you pick a whole new you know you put those songs away you pick a whole new two or three songs to work on um, and when I say work on, that means you sitting down and really working out the, you know, the chords, the rhythm and the picking pattern and not just like, you know, just like playing the song and stuff. This is you kind of seriously working on sitting down and working on something um, because the, you know, if you're just playing your ukulele, I don't necessarily count as, as practice. It's just counted as playing, you know, playing your ukulele. Practicing is sitting down and working stuff out. Now, with that said... Next week, you know, or the you know the, the next week that's uh, in this uh, regimen, you pick your two or three new songs, and then you learn that as much as possible. And you know, next week, same thing. And when the month is over, you pick your new two or three songs. You pick one or two from last month that you didn't finish. Okay, for that week, and that's kind of like a measuring stick because you can see how much better you've gotten. Like what you couldn't do last month, you might be able to do um, that that month. And at the same time, you're you know you're learning new chords, new rhythm, and you're using and you should be you know you should be anyway using the uh, play along to kind of groove too. So you're exposing yourself to new chords all the time, to new patterns, to new rhythm, to new uh, you know to new picking, and all of that is going to translate into you know learning songs faster. Okay. Now, when you pick out a song of your own, if you know if you see the co the chord progression that you've seen before in the other lessons, that should come easy. If it's got the same groove, that should come a lot easier. You know, and um, you're you're basically practicing uh, something different every time because a lot of people come up to me and say that like I've been trying to learn the song for the past five months and I kick I still can't play it, and that's because you're running into the same wall. So you know you want to. Make sure that you, you know, maybe you don't have the right um, muscle memory or you don't have the right technique yet. So just 
you know, kind of move on a little bit and learn something else and then go back to it. So you'll increase your, you know, your repertoire by at least two or three songs every week, at least exposed to those two or three songs every week. And, um, and that's kind of a great way to build up your repertoire and build up your ukulele skills and, uh, and build up a good kind of sense of musicianship and groove if you're also utilizing the play alongs. I think that's one way to do it. And if, you know, if, if you want a, if you want a different way, because it's really the best way, a different way is to just, you know, learn, like learn songs that you like, that you know, that you're familiar with. So you know how it goes, you know where it's going to go. Um, then, you know, try your best to learn as much chords as possible. So that like when you uh, pick out a song that you want to do or you want to learn, you're not running into anything that that is unfamiliar. So you having the confidence and having the um, a, the knowledge to kind of take on anything that comes at you is is pretty important. I think that's that's good when when trying something new and and, and trying to add to your repertoire. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Sorry, it's a long winded <laughs> answer, but that's really that's really it. You know, Just try as much songs every week. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think um, some people, you know, some people get into ukulele because mm -hmm. they, they see like Jake or something mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, that's what I want to do. I want to yeah. like show people I can play like Jake mm -hmm. and impress them like that. Mm -hmm. But then like they they try to do it and, you know, we tell them like, oh, why don't you try learning like songs made easy? And they, they go mm -hmm. like, no, I, I don't want to learn <laughs> those kinds of songs. Like, yeah. I, I don't want to play those kinds of songs because that's not really what's going to catch people's attention. Mm, mm. But then, like, um, I think about, like, uh, the challenge where we made you go out into Kapa Town, right, and try to teach people mm. to play ukulele. And the song that you used was um, Just the Way You Are, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know there's, like, people who are like, oh, no, I, I don't want to learn. I don't mm. want to learn. And yeah. then you showed somebody else just the way you are. And when they heard that, they will go. They were like, Can I okay, try? Yeah. yeah, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> yeah, I'll try, yeah, I'll yeah. try the ukulele <laughs> yeah. now, you know? And I think that's like um, people think like right like oh if I learn Bohemian Rhapsody or while my guitar gently weeps I I can show off and, mm -hmm. and people will be like oh you're you're the best player ever <laughs> but then if you learn those songs or like you try to learn those songs and you play it for somebody and you can only play the intro like I can tell you for a fact that playing a simple song like just the way you are or I'll melt with you or something you know like one or two chord songs will be way more impressive than like you just being able mm. to play just the intro to this one song or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, don't, even though, you know, even though it seems like simple or it's like, I don't want to learn those songs because it's like made for beginner, you know, the, again, it brings it back to beginner isn't a dirty word, right? Mm -hmm. Like, even though those songs are made for that things, like don't think that you, it's still not good to learn or, it's not impressive to somebody who doesn't play ukulele or yeah those are and or you won't have fun playing those songs because they're all of those things like yeah and it's it's a stepping stone to the you know eventually playing whatever while my guitar gently weeps or whatever mm -hmm. you yeah know, it all builds playing. on each other so yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Devin said i do want to play like jake yeah well, <laughs> you know I, we, I, we so all. so so do we <laughs> but yeah like uh just putting on you know whatever you can you know whatever you want on your plate but just make sure that you know you're uh you're trying something new all the time because um if you get stuck on on one thing that's gonna start to lead you down a hole where you're just like ah you get frustrated and that's how people kind of fall off with their ukulele so just if um you know if you're learning something and it's a bit difficult try something else and then go go back to it and that's really all it is that, yeah. that i was trying to say yeah earlier too you said uh learn songs that you already really know yeah but the question is too like do you really know the song right because like mm. we've had people who uh students who will play for you know you during uh one-on-one -on -one coaching or something mm -hmm. and then you ask them okay what's the key of the song mm -hmm. and they don't know the key of the song like they don't know so they're even though you you maybe hear the song a bunch and you you're like oh i'm, I'm really familiar with this song which is great that mm -hmm. that is what you have to do uh like do you actually know the key of the song do you know the groove of the song mm -hmm. do you know where they emphasize certain things you know you can really get into like knowing this song inside and out you know mm -hmm. not not just like oh i like this song and i like listening to it on the radio mm -hmm. there is like a 
you can go very deep with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You think, Gary? Yeah. I mean, really, just there's no way to fail at this. No, no, <laughs> it no. just the only way is to <laughs> stop playing. So yeah. as long as you keep playing and you enjoy the process, then it'll be like a process that you can you can ride that wave for the rest of your life, basically. Yeah. You know, you just yeah. have fun for the rest of your life with this instrument, mm -hmm. making music and creating music and expressing yourself. Just, yeah, just do mm -hmm. it. It's, um, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, your, your song library will grow uh, continually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As so, long as you keep going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. good point. Oh. A lot of people have like this ego right too when they're learning ukulele, like if, especially if they're adults, because mm -hmm. they're like, "Oh, I'm an adult. I should, mm -hmm. I should be proficient at things." <laughs> yeah. yeah, but there, there was like a, a quote or a saying that I liked where it's like, uh, "Enjoy your failures while you're learning." Like, mm -hmm. if you enjoy your failures, it's like you kind of enjoy the whole thing, right? You mm -hmm. don't. There yeah, isn't anything bad. there's no downside yeah. <laughs> and especially you know the the person that they're like is talking to is like especially if you're a beginner right you don't think that you're, you're like oh i'm an adult mm -hmm. or i'm proficient in all these other things why is this one thing giving me a hard time it's like well you're a toddler you're an infant in this other thing and you talk that's a that's what toddlers and infants do they hmm. <laughs> they in you know they cry when they fall down yeah. or whatever but ultimately they're like enjoying the process of mm -hmm. like just trying Growing to walk. up yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so it, it, it's the same thing mm -hmm. that's what you're trying to do you're you're mm -hmm. just barely learning to speak and you're mm -hmm. just barely learning to crawl so don't get so down on yourself you know for yeah feeling. so there you should just say like don't worry little babies <laughs> you can't, can't wait till the little babies it's grow a, to be big uke babies it's all, i mean that's really like the best way to learn yeah. anything is to to treat yourself like that and then yeah. be able to make mistakes and mm -hmm. and grow give yourself leeway yeah yeah. Yeah. Make yeah. yeah yeah all right um next uh there is a question mm -hmm. or there was a question in the chat okay mm. Uh, okay, let's do this one. Yep. Um, so Suhewa, Suhewa asked, uh, how can you find out uh, when hearing a song what key it is in? Um, it's, uh, I mean, it has a lot to do with repetition, just kind of being familiar with, uh, you know, with, with the way that a key sounds. But also, you can, uh, you know, you can just use process of elimination. Okay, and that's and just kind of hunt. That's what we we're talking about earlier, like hunting, you know, around for for the note. So you have, you know, you have the song, right? If your ukulele is in tune to four forty, that should be the first step that you do. So that if you play a note and it's the same note that they're playing, it should sync up. All right. So with that said, um, pick a part in the song where there's a prominent melody line. Okay. And you and try to just you know feel around on your ukulele where that melody line is and try to figure it out for yourself like note for note what that melody line is. Now knowing how to play that melody line is gonna you know is gonna give you hints of what key you're going to be in by showing you which notes they're skipping, which notes that they're playing. Okay, so for example, if there's a line that goes up, that's. Maybe something easier than like <laughs> scale, right? So maybe. Maybe that's the riff, okay? There we go. That's that's the riff. Now I got this note, this note, this note, this note, this note. Okay, so I got. Now, knowing those notes right there, it ends in you know, it starts in C, ends in D. Okay? So First thing I'm gonna do is, is is it in C? You know, do I have all the notes in C? All those notes are in C. Okay, all good. Now, uh, is is it in D? Uh, not necessarily because the C note right here is not in the D scale. So it's just process of elimination. You're just kind of like, okay, well that note doesn't belong in this key. That note belongs in this key, and it shares this note. So the more you you know, the more of the song that you figure out. Um, you'll then kind of see what key it's in. And more so if you start to figure out the chords, because chords-wise, um, the three major and the three minor chords that each key possesses is unique to that key. So if uh, if this song... Uh, 
if in, in this song I had the you know I figured out the chords were G D and C it can only be G because uh, that's the only key that those three major chords will exist in you know like if uh, if we're just playing the, the straight up chord family and there's no special chords to it okay so G D C it'll only be in the key you know key of G if uh, if it if it was G F C then that would be a totally different key, which would be in the key of C, because that's the only key that C, F, and G major uh, exist in. So just by process of elimination, um, you'll be able to figure out what key a song is in. And in order to do that, um, a little bit of music theory is uh, is required, okay? And um, music theory will kind of carry you from, from, from there. And... Just by uh, just by knowing some of the notes, plug that in and some of the theory, it'll spot out the answer, really, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think people we've explained this process before, mm -hmm. and I think people people are like, "Well, I can't do that," or you know, mm -hmm. they see it and they get intimidated mm -hmm. because we can do this. Like the three of us can do this thing pretty fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. like if somebody's playing a song. We can probably figure out the chords within five minutes or one playthrough of the song, you know, yeah, or something. It, unless it's like a crazy song, but mm -hmm. um, and, and they think like, oh, I have to be like that, right? Yeah. That's 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 the goal that I'm aiming towards. But yeah. no, like when you're starting off trying to learn things by ear, mm -hmm. uh, really, you're like, it should just be like one note. Mm -hmm. That's all you're trying to get, right? Like if you're trying to figure out the picking mm -hmm. by ear like just try and find that one mm. note that you know is that like, yeah oh, sounds okay in the song yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this matches oh yeah, I, yeah. I got it from mm -hmm. here to here it's kind of like yeah this this, <laughs> this note matches this note doesn't match yeah. and then you can get it kind of start you, working from there you mentioned like embracing your mistakes and stuff that's really what you know figuring out songs by ear is you're supposed to make those mistakes so you know what doesn't belong in yeah, that key yeah. you know like so just just kind of try at it and uh and you'll you know you'll mess up but you're supposed to mess up and you know if you're trying to figure out uh what key a song is in if you watch once again the ukulele challenge of uh of me aaron and kahai inside the car and I was just supposed to figure out songs that came up on the radio. I'm doing the same exact thing where I'm trying to figure out, you know, like the notes to uh, to that song. And from there, that's how I figure out what uh, what chords are in there. And that from there, that's how I figure out the key. Mm -hmm. And and even like some songs, mm -hmm. right? I think you actually you got like pretty close to the chords, mm -hmm. but then it was like the relative major. Mm -hmm. or the yeah, it wasn't the minor. exact chord, yeah. but. And that's that's the thing too is like uh, you learn those things too because mm -hmm. that it, it happens you know yeah. mm -hmm. and if a seasoned musician probably if you play a relative major for a relative minor they might say like oh you might want to play this chord instead because it it fits the song a little bit mm -hmm. better but then I think somebody who actually knows music will understand why you made that mistake you know because mm -hmm. like they're so closely related it's understandable yeah. if you you mishear that or something yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, I'll just like, I'll play that B flat chord shape and just move it up the fretboard one fret at a time. <laughs> until and then, you find until it. Until yeah. it lands on mm -hmm. something that sounds like part mm -hmm. of the song. Mm -hmm. And then if I, if I find that, then I play chord shapes that are related to that, like, you know, mm -hmm. would be related in that mm -hmm. chord family or, you know, a different uh, a chord family that has that chord in it. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. that's it. That's, that's yeah. usually like, you, you can get that within like, five minutes less than, yeah. less than a minute yeah. yeah i think yeah people people will see like oh we just improvised this or we just came up mm -hmm. with this thing on the spot you know like mm -hmm. musicians who do this and you might see like a piano player and they'll start playing like crazy things right mm -hmm. but it's probably either they're pretty confident in what key they're playing because you know somebody told them like oh hey we're playing in this key yeah or, or they they just know music so well that they can recite the key from memory yeah you know? like they or they're hear. looking at the other instruments what yeah. other they, mm -hmm. they understand how other instruments work and they can there's decipher so, based off of that yeah there's so much tells to give you clues to what it actually is supposed to be right if you pay <laughs> attention but then also these guys like you might be listening and it's like how do they just jump in without knowing anything and the the honest truth is like they probably they're probably like playing around and if they land on a funky note, they're like mm. changing it to the right one, you know? Yeah. 
That's so that's half step only, away, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either that or they do what Mike says, like mm-hmm. just you lean into it and you play the funky note mm-hmm. over and over and over until mm-hmm. people are like, oh, that's that's a little sour. But <laughs> I guess I like it's that, that now. Yeah, yeah, it's part of the song <laughs> I now. I like that taste, you know. So yeah. it, that's being a good musician and being good at like picking out things by ear. It really is like getting comfortable with the wrong notes, too, you know, mm-hmm. and not being afraid to play them every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's two cool things. Like, that's two things that we do for like the ukulele challenges: is figure out video game songs <laughs> and just you know like figuring out what key things are. Yeah, yeah so really, ukule- ukulele challenge. Check out that series. It's fun. We we have fun doing it. Except don't may- maybe not the ones where like where we're playing charades though. <laughs> you know, like watch the uh, <laughs> once we're actually playing music. <laughs> <laughs> Therese ones are are the best. They're that is the best fun. episode. I I will fully agree with you to a thousand percent. But for the sake of learning something, then maybe maybe not those. Maybe not the Jake versus Young Kid. Well, oh, should have shown Jake the. Oh man, uh, Jake was in the that podcast that we're talking about, and because uh, we, we showed this off. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. like What is that? <laughs> I. I see a lot of uh, comments in the challenges mm-hmm. too that are like, "Oh, you did this under an hour. That's yeah. amazing, right?" Yeah. But like, uh, and that was a long time, actually. Yeah, yeah. and uh, if people shouldn't feel like, or it's not, you weren't born with this talent of doing mm-hmm. figuring out songs in under mm-hmm. an hour, right? No. Like, how much? Uh, yeah, how much hours would you say you put into listening to CDs at your parents' house and mm-hmm. trying to figure that out? So. Yeah. This That's is where I got skill. my ten thousand hours, like right off the <laughs> bat. You know, this is a skill that you've built over a lifetime, yeah. and that's why you can you're so proficient at doing it under an hour. Yeah, right? and especially like ukuleles, like you know, sound. Like if if I couldn't see what a person is playing and they play a chord, I can get pretty close to it because like I've heard the ukulele sound so much, <laughs> or like I've heard a G chord like a million times or a C chord, an F chord or a B flat chord, yeah. any of those chords since I've heard them so much times, I'll hear it. I don't even need to look at it. I'm like, yeah, that's straight yeah. up B flat or whatever. Or, you know? or it's like, uh, that reminds me of this one song that we play in G. Yes, yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it just it just sounds like it. So or and sometimes and and this was speaking of podcast, uh someone asked, you know, like uh, asked Brittany if I had like a perfect pitch too cuz Brittany has perfect pitch. Mm. She'll know something and and I have what's called relative uh pitch, uh-huh. you know? Like so like I, that you can develop. Yes, that you can develop. <laughs> you can develop um relative pitch. The, that's the kind of ear that Brittany has, like that's just amazing you know, uh, like that's and part of it is genetic yes too, right yeah um but i've heard this so much and i've heard so i can hear mm, i can produce this note like whenever uh-huh. so i can kind of tune my ukulele to that if i mean you know, if i want to yeah or if i'm hearing a note somewhere like for for example uh we were me and mike were like in a toy store you know with like with these wind chimes and then mike is like so i'll dream what's this note I'm like, oh, it's this. He's like, no, it's it's this note. I'm like, trust me, it's 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 pretty close to a G. That's why it was like uh-huh. an A or something. Uh-huh. And uh, Mike is like, no, it's it's this note. I'm like, Mike, let's let's bring out our um, our uh, our tuner right now. So I took my tuner out from. I was like, see, it's whatever G or A or whatever. <laughs> so I'm like, Dude, I hear the G note every single day of my life going. Uh-huh. Ever since I learned how to play ukulele, that note has been imbued my head, you know, and just embedded in there. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I know that, mm, and you just can produce it whenever, yeah. <laughs> you know? So you wouldn't be able to, to necessarily t- tell what other notes are. Yeah, but, that but I'll one, latch on to that. Yeah. yeah, especially in that octave. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He, so like even uh, Glenn, the song that Glenn sent and mm-hmm. was like, oh, I'm, I want to use this song. I was like listening to it, figuring out the key, figuring out what chords are being played. And I was like, this melody sounds like something. And I tried, to, I, so I was like singing the melody to myself and I figured it out that it's not exactly the same, but it sounds like nothing on you. And uh-huh. when I pulled up nothing on you, it's the same key. That's it's why. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I, so I was doing that. And then when I got into me, and my dad went to uh, get groceries and I got into the truck and I was talking to my dad about it and he's like, oh yeah, you're playing a song, right? And I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, nothing on you. And he was like, Oh, you're playing um i'm yours right and i was like 
Yeah, because it, it, it is B flat again. Like all, <laughs> all the songs are in B flat. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it is, it is, you just build up your knowledge of like songs or like little melody lines or little mm-hmm. things that you can use as reference. Yeah. And then that will help you figure out the key. Yeah. It's yeah. not, we're not just pulling it out of thin air like, oh, I got it. I know exactly what's mm-hmm. being played. Mm-hmm. It's for, I think for most musicians, we're like, well, it sounds like this, and I know <laughs> this pretty well, so I'm going to use this as a reference for <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah. Right. Speaking of pulling things out of thin air, you know what <laughs> people do when they pull things out of thin air? They uh, write songs about it. <laughs> so, speaking of writing songs, <laughs> segue. <laughs> you know how to segue to here's me. The, here's the one that I pulled out of thin air. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, uh, here on Thursday Live Lesson, we have um, a song challenge. So, we give you guys either the key or whatever it may be, but like we give you guys a guide on, you know, on what kind of song to write. You guys write your songs. We give, you know, some um, some extras and some bonuses and stuff if you guys want to write about that. But mainly, um, you know, we have a pretty easy guideline. And whoever sends in their, uh, you know, their original songs um, gets put into a lucky drawing. And this time we have, oh, I put it away already. This time we have up for grabs a Lilikoi Butter by Liko Lehua. Apparently, if you mix this with guava jelly <laughs> and put it and pour it, <laughs> I heard the word pour, oh. <laughs> and pour it on uh, on top of apple pie, <laughs> magic, like a genie comes out <laughs> and <laughs> grants you three wishes. We learned this on the, the <laughs> podcast this morning. This yes. Is, but this is just hearsay and we're not responsible for any health risks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, the genie gives you diabetes. <laughs> 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 you know, oh. Just come on. <laughs> that's, oh, that's a guarantee. That's not three wishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, so, um, yeah, Little Koi. So with, with, all, with all jokes aside, Little Koi Butter will be giving this away to uh, to a lucky person who sent in their song. Now, you have until what, next week? No. To a, oh. Because we're not going to be here next week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The week after? Is that yeah. the week after? Okay. The, you have until the week after. So two more weeks to uh, submit your songs. But here is the guidelines for this time. Kahai? Yeah, uh, so the base guideline is mm-hmm. just write a song uh, when you think of thankful jive turkey. <laughs> and you can use it as lyrics or you can just use it as inspiration. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. Or you can even be like, yeah, I was thinking of that song when I wrote this. And, <laughs> you know, we Whatever, won't, we won't just submit it submit a song. Yeah, <laughs> just put a song. So um, uh, what we do is we usually uh, you know, play along with you folks and stuff, and we'll write songs uh, as well. So I wrote a song. Aaron Kahai wrote a song, and this is where we showed you guys what you know what we wrote based on the uh, the guidelines. So it kind of gives you guys ideas of what you can come up with based on the guidelines that we give out. Okay, so here we go. This uh, this song that I I'll go, I'll go first, and the song that I made it's not quite done yet. I just had a bunch of ideas and just kind of threw them together. Okay, now. Uh, the guideline was, was it something jive turkey? Thankful. Thankful jive turkey. So during Thanksgiving or uh, in, I think in Thanksgiving morning, they have those like turkey trots or whatever. Mm-hmm. So people, can, you know, like I guess can get a workout in before like they just overload themselves with food. So I was thinking about trot and I started thinking about the word strut instead, like a turkey strut, you know, mm-hmm. like so it's thankful and Thanksgiving, the turkey trot, the turkey and then jive is kind of just kind of this funky, you know, this funkiness to it. So I'm like, how like could I make an audio of what a very confident turkey, a strutting turkey uh-huh. down the down the street would sound like? So this is what I came up with. Okay, so here we go. Hope uh, this it's it's just ideas, but I'm sure you guys what I got so far.
<laughs> so it's a nice little groove that you know that I created. Um, yeah. So if you guys want to take that run away with it, you can. You guys can. It's just a that little riff, kind of strutting turkey. I was just kind of envisioning this, this turkey with like, like a like a hat, you know, and like <laughs> fuzzy, like yeah. big big purple hat with a feather on it and stuff. Just <laughs> jive turkey and rocking down. <laughs> uh, yeah, with a leisure suit on. <laughs> <laughs> Towards the end, I forgot my own riff, which is <laughs> trying to figure out how to do it. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, there we go. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you guys get the idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something like that. Something like that. So there's a, actually a question, I, sure. and I wanted to wait till after you play your song, because mm -hmm. uh, Chris and Sue asked if you could demonstrate a uh, funk kind of strumming. Yeah. And so, th yeah, like you use that in your your song. And when I think of uh, funk playing, I think of a lot of muted stuff, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, kind of common in funk playing. So Yeah. It's yeah. more about the rhythm. That's about why. the rhythm. Yeah. yeah. I like uh, when I play funk or when I think about funk. I always just kind of, you know, take my take my left hand and just get this this very like eighth notes kind of, you know, kind of thing or sixteen notes, mm -hmm. and then I think about I think about <laughs> yeah, yep, you know, like that's that's yeah. the groove that I always think of or and Bruno uh, Mars. Oh, uh, do you remember? <laughs> yeah. Twenty fifth side of September. Yeah, I think Anything I use that too like for that, my song. You know, like, <laughs> it's uh, it's that groove that that um that you always want to think about. So funk. It's all about what you're not playing, yeah. Yeah, because that like, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> it's like yeah. one or two notes like played together, but it's just one, two, one, two. If you broke it down, that's really all it is. And then, but everything mm -hmm. around that yeah. is what makes it's it just funky. the rhythm. Mm -hmm. yeah. They they call it stabs, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and in, in uh, <laughs> September, there's that the uh, like horn stabs that go, dun, bop, dun, dun. Bop. yeah, mm -hmm. like you, you just hear it. So. If you play, if you're picking notes instead mm -hmm. of like holding out the notes for long, you want to pick it and cut it short. Pick, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. pick it and cut it short. Yeah. So that's that's why the um that riff of boop, 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 yeah very short notes like all the notes that I played weren't long at all. Mm -hmm. Maybe just that uh, the ending of the riff. Uh, that's the only note that yeah. I that I hold. Everything else is super short. You know, like uh, uh -huh. very There's... very short. There's a lot of too you playing chords, but then you would just maybe press on the chord for one mm -hmm. one beat, mm -hmm. and the rest of it was you like muting and just like strumming, keeping that eight beat mm -hmm. rhythm mm -hmm. beat too. So yeah, you use that, mm -hmm. and it should sound pretty funky. Yeah. Speaking of video games, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very Mega Man. Mega Man Two. Check out that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's on Spotify. You know, do yourself a favor and listen to the Mega Man 2 album. You're like, what is? Why did El Dream tell us to listen to this? <laughs> Enjoy its genius. <laughs> really, it's it's so good. Uh, yeah. Um, so, go hire Aaron. Who wants to go next? Yeah, Aaron's going to play my song. Okay. He has my computer, so he's going to play my song for me. Cool beats. Um, yeah, and then I went with Jive and kind of mm -hmm. the same thing that we did last time, right? Mm -hmm. Where pick parts of the, the, the prompts <laughs> to use. I went with Jive, mm -hmm. and I incorporated Turkey into it, but mm -hmm. probably not in a way you guys would think. And uh, I'll let you guys know after you hear it. <laughs> There's no. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done that. Dang it! It would have been. It Just sample been. it and then extend <laughs> it, and then that's part of the background. Or like, <laughs> Make it I, like I have Turkey friends, Aaron. That's a little. It's a little that's offensive. A little offensive. <laughs> a little offensive. Yeah. I probably. Yeah. I probably. They don't all sound like that. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> I should have talked to you earlier, Aaron. Oh, man, you get triggered. <laughs> I probably could have taken a turkey, like a turkey gobble, uh, and make it into sampling. like a pretty heavy sub, like bass, uh, yeah, like a like kind of a dubstep bass. Uh, okay, yeah. here we go. It's um, I don't know how long this is gonna be. Let's see. Uh, you might want to pause it. And, um... There we go.
<laughs> yeah, nice. love, love that groove, man. <laughs> so I got in um, that. Uh, I think one of the other requirements was a uh, minor fourth. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, the the beginning chord progression and, and it happens again in the middle. Mm -hmm. Uses just a, a minor fourth at the very end. Mm -hmm. It's an A, <laughs> and the part that I you I I snuck in Turkey is uh, the reason why this song I wrote the song in A is because I use like a secret cipher and so I I wrote out the alphabet mm -hmm. and then I started with like C then I went with C sharp is like for B right mm -hmm. D is for uh, C D E yeah it just it goes yeah. all the way down uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then I took the the what letters correspond with what notes <laughs> for turkey that's cool and then i used those notes and it ended up being in the key of a mm -hmm. oh so uh the the part where you if you listen to it it spells out turkey and it, it's only once is the bass oh the bass plays like the notes that would spell out the word turkey oh wow uh, yeah oh <laughs> hey, hey, it, hidden it hidden is. track it, 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 it and then I kind of had to finagle it a little bit to make it fit the groove right. Yeah. And then like once that one part was over, I was like, okay, I snuck it in. I'm gonna <laughs> for, uh, the groove repeats itself, and then I was like, I'm gonna actually make like a nice sounding bass line. For the second part. It but, reminded yeah. me of um, uh, speaking of fun, like the hustle, and not most, not the song. It's the uh, the effect you're using for like that. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what you know reminded me of. In the back background, yeah. Just that that was just a lot of guitars. Like uh -huh. I had, I think I recorded five tracks of guitars cool. overlaying each other, mm -hmm. and then some had like walls on it and you know filters and stuff. So that mm -hmm. kind of gave it that effect. Mm -hmm. And then playing that, you know, playing again where I'm I'm palm muting with my my right hand, but then I'm also trying to keep the notes super short. Too, yeah, my yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Aaron. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> yeah so what is it thankful drive yeah. turkey yeah yeah so i just <laughs> I, I wrote a song and it's yeah i'll just play it <laughs> <laughs> Locked up in a bit of a fix, I couldn't get away, yeah My time was up incrementally slipping right into the grave, yeah Who could redeem my sin of being born in a world that's so damn cold? Who knows? The engine stops as they rattle the lock, oh God, I think it's the time on stage I try as they ready the block It's my neck that's next on the line My friends and enemies stuff into the room To see this whole damn show But you know wow, wow. <laughs> You pardon me for the crime of being denied I'm feeling overly blessed this season, blessed this season No time to spare, gotta get out of here, this is the chance that I'm taking I made the list, not everyone's wishbone gets a lucky break, yeah And what did I do to deserve not being dealt the final blow? Only you know For the crime of being and now I'm feeling overly blessed this season wow, wow. You pardon me for the crime of being and now I'm feeling overly blessed Season, bless this season, bless this season. 
call that. You, you had me the gravy <laughs> reference, the gravy reference. I caught it, and I'm like, oh, that's genius. Yeah. And then you hit me with that minor four, and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, so so it's actually... um, So I I was thinking, like, funk, funky, so, like, mm. I did C minor. Yeah. And so the four of of c would would already be yeah, a minor, minor. Yeah, yeah. so i I made it a major instead mm-hmm. and then when it went to the chorus, chorus that's when you then, the, then i wow. used the minor yeah yeah so um <laughs> so yeah so it's in c minor and c major mm-hmm. and then it uses the f minor and major mm-hmm. yeah but but yeah so like <laughs> so it doesn't necessarily say uh, gravy but it's like yeah yeah, yeah it's grave yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then it, even like um fix and yeah. yes so fixes. Like fixing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fixes. and then there was one more to oh well trot i used trot <laughs> and then um what well, what else there was another one too that I was like, I, I put wishbone in there. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah. Not not everyone's wishbone gets the lucky break. So it's like a oh. it's from from the from the viewpoint of a turkey. Yeah. yeah. That gets pardoned, <laughs> right? And so like he he's like it's locked a pardoned up. Pardoned turkey. Yeah, locked up and and, and ready to be yeah. killed and then gets pardoned. Mm-hmm. So and then uh yeah, I mean in the grander scheme of things, it's like uh that's kinda how we all feel, right? Like right. we we survived 2020. Yep. <laughs> now, now, we're, now what would you do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now what? Uh, you know the, the episode of Bob's where um, the family, like, saves the turkey mm-hmm. and they, they drive it out to the countryside? Like, I just imagine this playing as, like, a interstitial or something, you yeah. know, like, in the middle of the episode. <laughs> so, it's like, it, yeah, it's, the, it, it's like your song is, like, so good and... <laughs> fits so thematically with like the idea of like pardoning a free <laughs> turkey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could I could totally imagine them like just using the song into mm. whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. They're because they're very much like mm-hmm. that, right? Like they'll make a whole episode about one thing and then they'll just do like, a song throw, about it. Yeah. 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 A very specific. <laughs> yeah. Very specific song. Yeah. Right on guys, so you've heard our songs so you can kind of see what you can do. You know, with this is m- way more open than anything. Like uh, whatever inspires you by hearing the words uh, thankful jive turkey you know like whatever it may be write a song on that whatever chords whatever key you want to do we do have some guidelines and stuff that you guys can check out but for the most part the only important or mandatory guideline is to you know to be inspired by the words thankful jive turkey so write whatever you want we'll give you guys you know a couple weeks and the next time we come back we'll announce the winner for the um uh for the lilikoi butter okay and i mentioned lilikoi butter and i mentioned guava jelly or the lilikoi butter i want to put out a very special because yeah as a as a way of saying thank you um i want to give out a second jar of uh and it's going to be guava jelly, but it's going to another person. This is a t- completely different, um, different thing from the from the little koi butter. I just want to hear what your favorite quote from Thursday Live Lesson has has been. Because and that I thought of that when we were you know, and I'm like, oh, I have <laughs> I have like turkey friends and they'll be offended or whatever. <laughs> you know, we say some some pretty like uh, some pretty stuff uh, just for fun here on on uh, on Thursday Live Lesson. Um, Tell us what your favorite quote from, uh, and it can be from any, you know, any one of us three, um, and we'll pick one random person who sends us a quote uh, from, any a, yeah, from any episode. Yeah, any episode, any any episode that that we've aired so far. Tell us your favorite quote from uh, from Thursday Live Lesson, and the, uh, huh? Uh, should they email questions? Yeah, email questions at ukuleleontheground.com. Questions at ukuleleontheground.com, and uh, we'll pick a random winner and we'll give them guava jelly. So we got little koi butter and guava jelly, and those two people should meet up together and combine powers <laughs> with <laughs> apple pie. <laughs> with, yeah, with the apple pie. But yeah, we'll give guava jelly to um, you know to to somebody just as a you know as a thank you for supporting us throughout all these years. So this goes out to all the uh, all the people who've been kind of listening in every week because that's the only way you'll pull a quote from somewhere. You know, mm-hmm. tell us your favorite Thursday live lesson quote and tell us from who. And uh, yeah, we'll put you in a drawing, okay? And send it over to questions at ukulelaontheground.com. Questions at ukulelaontheground.com. Send us your favorite quote. 
I would love to hear some. Like, <laughs> yeah, because we forget <laughs> yeah, what we, we've said. We say a lot of stuff in the show, and uh, and we find it funny at the time, but then yeah, we forget by like the next week. So I want to go back and take a walk back in memory lane. You can put more than one in if you want to. If you're like, oh, this <laughs> yeah. is an episode, this or whatever, or if you don't even know the episode, you're just like, oh, I heard you guys say this before, and it, you know, but, it yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, the you can you can definitely tell us uh, whatever quotes you like and stuff, but then, yeah, uh, it'll just still come for as one, one. yeah, as yeah, one, as one. So. Yeah. But yeah, send in as much as much as you want. We would love to hear from you folks because uh, we do this we do this for you guys. But also, you know, we I love hanging out with my two friends here, and we just kind of you know like just talk story really. <laughs> yeah. in Hawaii we call it talk story and we're just kind of having fun and this is what we would do anyway at the office we're just kind of like hey did you listen did you hear this or did you hear about this or like or video games or Nicktoons or whatever you know <laughs> yeah. but anything uh, whatever quote it may be it doesn't have to be the exact quote if you can just kind of remember it like roughly that would be that would be good too <laughs> yeah. I mean, but we just want to hear from you folks that's really if, it yeah yeah and a lot of times we use like quotes for the, the title of the lesson themselves <laughs> yeah. so I'm sure if you go back <laughs> you can find whatever which one stuck in your head or whatever yeah so if you can do that we'll send you some guava jelly all right um have a great one everyone that's pretty much it that's the time that we have we'll mm-hmm. see you folks in just a couple weeks uh happy thanksgiving uh, make sure you be thankful to uh to all of your friends and family and send them your love and make sure to uh, spread that love through the ukulele through aloha all over the place have a great one Mahalo, see you tomorrow for a little Friday Live Jam. And uh, check out the brand new lesson uh, that yeah, just came but, out. Tiny Bubbles just came out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, but uh, just to let people know, we're not going to be here next week for Thursday and Friday. And Friday. Oh, and Friday. Yeah, because it's Turkey Day on Thursday and it's Recover from Turkey Day <laughs> on Friday. So, you know, like we don't want to be sleeping while we're jamming for you on Friday. So no Thursday, Friday. I know we just took a break or I just took a break like uh, <laughs> a week ago or two weeks ago. But we're going to take another break, you know, which... We deserve it. <laughs> we, work, we work so hard. <laughs> Just talking and playing music and stuff. Man, we should, should take a vacation. God. <laughs> if, if you guys don't know, we have been putting out the archive lessons of Thursday Live Lesson mm-hmm. on the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And we should have like, a, we've been putting out two every week. So next week, even though we're not here, there still be two yeah. more uh, lessons. So. Sounds good. Yeah. So we'll see you guys. Aloha.